In the previous section, we have learned different kinds of locators and selectors which can be used to locate web elements. In this section, we'll learn about the actions which we can perform in these located elements. We have already learned about the click action, that is, let's say if you'd like to click this block button because it is large. So let's go ahead and create a locator for the same. So on the page object, we can use the get by rule locator. And the locator's role is a button. The name on it says block button like this. And if I go ahead and highlight the same, you can see we have highlighted two buttons. That is the first one and the second one. But because we only want the first one, what we can do is on the locator, we can access the first element using the first attribute. Similarly, we can access the last one using the last attribute. So let's go ahead and access the first button and we will go ahead, store it in the button variable. And to remove the highlight, I'll just go ahead and use the footer locator so that it is highlighting something out of the viewport. Great. Now we can go ahead and click our button with the simple click method. You can see it gets clicked. Now along with the click action, we can perform a lot of other actions as well. That is, we can perform a double click, we can decide which button we use to click the button, let's say the right or the left, which is the default one. We can decide which key we hold when we press the button. That is, let's say I hold the control modifier key and hit the button. Of course, nothing happens. But if I hold the shift key and hit the button, you can see it gets outlined. That is like a tab. And we can also decide the position where we are clicking. So let's go ahead and see how can we do all of these things. So the first thing is seeing how can we double click the element and we can easily do that using the double click method. If I go ahead and hit it, you can see it gets highlighted again. Now to notice a difference that is actually see it getting twice because we use this button double click method, it instantly like without any delay clicks the button twice. But if we want to actually see it does that, let's go ahead and add in a delay that is to the double click method will provide the delay argument and the delay will be in milliseconds. So let's say we will wait for half a second that is 500 milliseconds for the next click. So if I go ahead and do this, you can notice that there is two clicks with 500 milliseconds as the delay. Of course, you don't need to do it, but for the demonstration, I did use the delay. Now we can go ahead and decide which button we use to click the element, that is the right or the left. And by default, it is the left one, that is the default one. But if you use the right one, it shows the context menu. So if I go ahead and again, use the click method, you can see it has a lot of arguments. So first one is the button argument to which we can provide left, which I mentioned is the default, or we can provide right. So if I go ahead and do it now, you will see the context menu popping up. That is this one right here. Now we can go ahead and also specify a key to hold when pressing the element. That is, let's say button dot click and in the modifiers argument, we can provide a list of modifiers. That is, we can be holding multiple keys at once or one key as well. And in this case, we'll only hold one. So we can say something like shift. And if I go ahead and hit enter, you can see this gets clicked with the shift button being hold it down. Of course, nothing extra happens, but this is what you can do as well. And as I mentioned, you can provide multiple keys like shift and control, or let's say the alt, or even the meta key like this. Finally, you can also decide whether or not to 
hover element before clicking. That is, let's say we will hover this element because it changes the state when we hover over the element. So let's go ahead and select the element. So our page get by role or let's use the locator instead to show off our scales. And I'll use the CSS selector. So it will be a button and the class applied is button hyphen outline outline hyphen primary and then i can simply go ahead and extract the element that is keep it in a variable let's say outline button and of course there are a lot of outlined primary buttons or actually one i guess so if i go ahead and outline button call the hover method you will see the change in the state of this primary button right here so let me go ahead and zoom it okay now if i go ahead and hit enter you can see it gets the same effect when we hover over the primary button so you can use the click method to click an element you can use the double click method to double click the element with an optional delay and you can also specify the button you click the element with you can also specify the modifiers to hold it down while clicking the element and also hover the element if that shows any extra functionality so those were the actions which you can perform in a normal element with your mouse